Hi. When I first talked about why we model in this class, one of the reasons I gave was to design better institutions. In this set of lectures, we're going to talk about something known as mechanism design. And the idea behind mechanism design is that you formalize an institution. You do so as follows. You basically decide, here are the set of actions that people can take, and then here are the payoffs or the outcomes associated with those actions. So in a sense, you're defining the rules of the game, the actions people can take, and what the payoffs are going to be. Now, in constructing these mechanisms, there's two features that often arise in social context that you try and overcome through the proper writing of a mechanism. The first one is hidden actions. So oftentimes, especially this is true in work environments, you don't see the actions people take. You only see the outcomes. What you'd like to do is you'd like to write employment contracts or incentive structures in such a way that people take the actions that you want. So even though the actions are hidden, you'd like to write some sort of mechanism so that the actions that people are going to take, the optimal actions for people to do, are going to be the actions you want. Now there's going to be other cases where it's not actions you're worried about, but it's information. So you may not know someone's type. So for example, someone could be high ability or low ability. Someone could be a safe driver or a risky driver. And what you'd like to do is you'd like to write some sort of contract so that these people separate out so you can identify who the high type people are and who the low type people are or who the risky drivers are and who the safe drivers are. So when we construct these mechanisms, two of the problems we want to sort of overcome are hidden actions, because we can't see what people are doing, and hidden information. We can't figure out what types people are, what they like, how risky they are, how much ability they have, that sort of thing. So what we'd like to do is figure out how do we write institutions to overcome these two problems. So once we get that core idea in mind about sort of how we can use institutions to figure things out that are hidden, we'll take them and we'll apply them to some real world examples. So the first thing we'll apply them to is auctions. When you think about auctions, there's lots of different ways we can auction things off. And we'll show how we can think of these different rules as mechanisms. Then what we'll do is we'll show a theorem that shows which of these rules are best. So do we have an ascending bid auction? Do we have a sealed bid auction? Or do we have something called a second price auction? So we can use theory, we can use models to figure out which of those particular auction rules is going to work best. After we do auctions, we'll look at something called public goods. So public goods are sort of like our collective action problem. They're goods that everybody benefits the more we have of, but you'd like everybody else to pay for them. So things like roads, clean air, clean beaches, those sorts of things. We'd all like those things to exist, but we'd prefer that other people pay for them. So we'll talk about what a public good is, and we'll talk about how you can use mechanism design to come up with solutions to public good problems. Now in doing this, I'm going to do it a little bit untraditionally. So I want to refer to a quote here. Murray Gelman once said, imagine how physic difficult physics would be if electrons could think. So remember when we talked about modeling people, how difficult it was. And we had three basic models. We had a rational choice model, we had a psychological model, and we had rule-based models. What we're going to do here is we're going to do mechanism design the standard way, and the standard way is to assume that people are rational. And so we're going to sort of lay out the basics of mechanism design assuming rational agents. But after we do that, we'll talk through what if people suffered from psychological biases or were slightly irrational, or what if it were the case that people just followed simple rules, would our, would our same results still follow? So we're going to have a dialogue using mechanism design as a framework for thinking again about how we model people. Okay, so that's an outline of what we're going to do. What we're going to do first is just lay out some of the basics of mechanism design, talk about hidden action and information, move on to auctions, and then conclude with some discussion of public good games. All right, let's get started.